day. My name is Mrs. Madumbu. I'm here to take a lesson on the surface area and volume of solid shapes in mathematics. And this is the core component, not the extended component of the mathematics. So we want to focus mostly on the surface area, but we cannot separate the two. So I'll just go through uh, some of the concepts on the volume, but my focus is on the is on the surface area. Now I want to look at these solid shapes. I want to make them three groups. Uh, firstly, uh, we want to look at the area and surface and uh, the volume of a sphere because this is the easiest part. This is the part that you don't really need to worry much because the volume and the surface area of a sphere is always provided in the examination. So all you need to do is to know the formula. Then we we'll also look at the prisms with particular attention to the cylinder. Then we will look at the pyramids with particular attention to the square-based pyramid and the cone. Now, to begin with, the surface area and the volume of the sphere. Now, the, I have a model of the sphere with me and there is the formula for the surface area. So it's 4 pi r squared. So each time you are given uh, the diagram, sometimes you are not given the diagram, but in case there is a diagram, they always make sure that they give the radius. So this marks the radius of the sphere. So in the next slide, I will illustrate how to calculate, though will just be theoretical. There are no calculations that I'm doing, right? The second formula, this is the formula for the volume, and it's 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So basically, these are the two formulas, and these are the formulas that are even supplied in the examination. All you have to do is just to substitute in the formula. Now, so a typical question where the diagram is given is whereby the diagram will show the radius since that is the only variable of the formula that we need to have. Otherwise, pi is our constant that we always use our 3.142 and we also use the pi in our calculator. So in this case, this is a situation where the illustration is given but sometimes it's just a theoretical question. Now, as we move on to prisms, we have three uh, prisms that we have. The first one being the cuboid, and the second one being the triangular-based prism, and the third one being the cylinder. So, the formula for finding the volume of any prism is the area of the cross section times the height. So you find out that in each of these, we have the formulas. So if you look at uh, the one for the cuboid, the cross section of a cuboid, even if you look at the red color, that's where we have the, the uh, width and the height. So if you look at the width, and the height that becomes the part which is the cross section and the L is the length. So it's always the area of the cross section times the length. So that gives us even the volume that we can express in simple terms, length times width times height. Now moving on to the triangular based prism, we can see with this red color, that this becomes our cross section. So the area of the cross section becomes the area of the triangle, which we can see that we are given the base of this triangle 
and we are given the perpendicular height. When we move on to the formula, we can actually see that the half BH, that's the area of the triangle, which is our cross section. Then H, the big uh, capital letter H, becomes the length of the prism or the height of the prism. So that's how we come up with half BHH, where the small h is just the base of the triangle and the big H is the height of the whole prism. And finally, the cylinder, we can see. This is our cylinder here and the cross section, the one which is in uh, the blue color, that's the cross section. So the cross section of our cylinder, it is a circle. Now you can see that each time there is a circle, you are given the radius. So if we go to our formula, the volume becomes pi r r, which is our pi, the normal pi r squared. So this is the circle and this is the cross section times h. And the h, as you can see here, is the height or the length of our prism. So this is the area of the cross section pi r squared times h. So basically, this is how we calculate the volumes of the prisms. Now, if we can move on to the surface area of each of these shapes. Now, I have my cylinder. So, as I've said before, with uh, the surface area, we really need to take particular attention because this is where we consider so many things. With volume, you can just calculate volume without considering whether a shape is open or a shape is closed, open both ends or closed both ends or open one end. But with surface area, because surface area measures the amount of surface of any given object. So we have to consider all those things. So if you look at our cylinder, if we are just to, to calculate what, they, what we might call the lateral area, right? Or the curved surface area. It means we are just focusing on this blue part. There won't be any problem. But where we need to find the surface area of the whole object, that is when we need to consider the curved part, the top part, which you can see here, which happens to be a circle, and the bottom part, which is another circle. So the total surface area becomes the sum of those three, the sum of the curved part plus these two. So in this case, if we want to do the surface area, this is the case where we need to do the net of this uh, cylinder. Now, as we do the net of um, the cylinder, you find out that the net is made up of the curved part, which if you can open, according to this illustration here, if we open, it becomes a rectangle. And this part, if it is laid flat to make a net, you find out that this will become the length of that rectangle. But originally, in this diagram, this was the circumference. This is why when we want to do the area, we say 2 pi r, right? And the 2 pi r is the common formula for the circumference. So this circumference here is the one which is going to be the length of this object. Then the edge is just the same edge that we have. It will remain. So it's just like basically we are saying area of a rectangle is length times width, which is the 2 pi r for the length and edge for the width. So that's how we do the surface area of the cylinder. Now, it means in any given situation, if you want to do the surface area, you will always be given the height, which is the 25, in this case, 25 centimeters, and they will show the 
the, the radius because these are the two variables that you need as you do your calculations. Pi is a constant that you always have. So in this particular case, it means it is just going to be, for the surface area, it will be our 2 um, pi r, which is 2 times pi times 5, right, times h, the 25. And where we need to do the total surface area, that is where we are going to add um, the pi r squared for this circle and for the circle. So you find out that in most cases, the language that is used in, this, uh, in the surface area is about curved part, about open, about closed, or total. So in most cases, when they talk about the total, it means we are not talking about the closed. Sometimes it will even be closed one end, which means you are using one circle. Open both ends, no circle at all. Now, we move on to pyramids. So, as opposed to the uh, prisms, we have looked at uh, pyramids as those shapes that we will have a base, but the shape will reduce to nothing or to zero. There is a vertex. So, I have here a cone, which is a typical pyramid. I also have another pyramid with me here, that I can show the physical shape and another pyramid that I have with me. Now, where the base is a square, we know. This is a square base pyramid, while this one, this, uh, the base is a hexagon. So it becomes a hexagonal based pyramid. So all of them, they are. Even the cone, I also have the model of a cone with me here. The base is a circle, so if you can see, all of them, they will be having the base, and we name them according to the base, which is the red part. And they always have a vertical height, the one which runs from the vertex all the way to the center of the base. That is it. So, you find out that when we want to do our calculations now, So, starting with our um, cone, you find out that we always need this vertical height, right? In calculating the volume, we need the vertical height and we also need the radius, right? But in calculating the surface area, that's when we need this slant height. And if you can see, these three, they form a right-angled triangle, which means if any of them is given, we can, any two of these uh, three are given, you can always calculate the third one by making use of the Pythagoras theorem. But however, in the core component, in most cases, the, all the measurements are given and the formula is provided as well. All you have to do is to know how to substitute in the formula. So in this case also, you can see, when we do the surface area, this is the net of a cone. So it means originally, the cone is a sector of a circle. What is the uh, circumference of the base is actually the length of the arc. But this small circle, it will be a new uh, circle which is not this one because uh, when we have this sector we, we when we have the the net this part is the same as that one but originally it was part of the circumference in the original diagram so this is our cone now the me the measurements that we need on our square based pyramid as you can see we also have this dashed line here, as you can see, which runs from the vertex all the way up to the center. This becomes the vertical height. We also need this height in calculations, and the best, like we said in this case, it's a square 
So this is the perpendicular height. And this one, the one which runs from the uh, vertex all the way to the sides, either here or there, this becomes the slant height. Now if you check, when we go to the net, this is the square, which is the base. While this part is, uh, these are the four sides that we have. In this case, they are isosceles triangles. So what was the length of the side of the square becomes the base of the triangle. And what was the slant height is the one that will become the height of the triangle. So when we want to do the surface area of this shape, we simply uh, take the sum of the area of the square, which is the side times side, plus the half base times height for this particular triangle, times the four. So that's how we come up with the total surface area of the um, uh, square-based uh, pyramid. And when it comes to the volume, it's always the area of the base, which in, in this case is a square, times one-third. Because every pyramid, if there is a corresponding uh, cylinder, like in this case, I have with me a prism and I have with me uh, a pyramid. These two, they are related. They are related in the sense that they share the same base, you can see. They also share the same height. If you can do an experiment, which we actually do sometimes at school, you find out that you try to pour a liquid in the cylinder, you find out that this is one third of the cylinder. So this is where we say area of cross section times the height. And if we check, this also is one third of the same area. So you can never separate the two. So this one, uh, the, sorry, the cone is one third of the cylinder if they share the same height and the same base. As we move on, I'm not doing any calculations on the screen but I'm just showing a typical question that if it is a cone, all you need to be given, like in this case, is the radius, the vertical height, and the slant height. So you can always calculate, first of all, you can calculate the volume because it is one third times pi times r squared. And here is my r. Sorry, there should be an H here, an H is missing. So it's a third pi r squared times H. And then if you are to find the total surface area, you find out that, like we said, there is always the surface area of the curved part. is pi times r times L. That's why we said we don't need the vertical height. We need the slant height L. So it is the curved part plus the pi r squared for one circle, which is the base of our cone. So that's how we do our calculations. It's just a question of substituting in the formula. So this concludes my lesson on um, just the hints on the surface area and the volumes of um, um, solid shapes. Thank you.